بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي محبه في الله continue on in our study of Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi his treaties had he doubt in our aqidatna we discussed in the last sitting about the importance of using sound dalil avoiding stories especially false stories and stories that could contain shirk and bid'a or kufr or shirk and the importance of looking at the adilla sound adilla in the shara that has the proper istinbat from the ulama and in this next point it's really <coughs> a further expansion of the same principle so there no, there's no need to really go uh, into depth because it was already covered in the last sitting but Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i of Ayyar Hamahu said لَا نَقْتُبُوا فِي كِتَابَاتِنَا وَلَا نَلْقِي فِي دُرُوسِنَا وَلَا نَخْتَبُوا إِلَّا بِالْقُرْآنِ أَوْ حَدِيثِ صَالِحِ لِلْحُجِّيَةِ وَنَقْرُهُ مَا يَسْدَرْ مَا يَسْدَرُ مِنْ كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْكُتَّابِ وَالْوَاعِذِينَ من الأقاسيس الباطلة ومن الأحاديث الضعيفة وموضوعة. So the Imam said that we do not write in our books, in our writings, or in our lectures, or in our khutbas, except with the Quran or hadith that is sound for using as adilla, for using as evidence. And we despise what takes place from many of many people who write, who write books and write um, uh, and, and make lectures or, or uh, who preach and they use a lot of stories uh, false stories and they use a lot of ahadith which are weak or fabricated so this ahabit is something very important also and an affirmation of what the sheikh said in his last uh, in the last point of the importance of using uh, sound adilla from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah or with the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah and along with that I'm not sure if this uh, I would imagine I'm sure this takes place in the English-speaking world as well, but this is something that is known and that we see in the Arabic-speaking world that you have a lot of this problem. We also have this, of course. Of course, you have jama'at, some groups that, especially jama'at at tabliq that they, uh, regardless of whatever language, whether it be in Urdu, whether it be in Hindi, whether it be in uh, Bengali, whether it be in English, whether it be in Arabic, that they use a lot of stories that are fabricated or and a lot of hadith, they use hadith to uh, for in order to uh, emphasize certain deeds or practice certain practices that are some of them are even fabricated and it also affects their Ittaqad uh, and definitely their minhaj, their methodology in understanding the nusus and understanding 
and propagating Dawah because their whole group is based upon it's a Dawah organization, Jamaat Tabliq. You know, it's the group for Tabliq to give uh, to deliver, you know, a message. So this is exactly what 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 their uh, their methodology is based upon, and unfortunately, they use a lot of fabricated ahadith and da'if ahadith and a lot of stories too. And sometimes those stories perhaps may contain shirkiyat or kufr. So this is the danger of building an organization or a group or even a sect in general. But especially if it is based upon weak evidence. And some of the verses that we already mentioned, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fiqh Kabi al Kareem, Aliyom Akmalta Lukum Dinakum, Watmamtu Alaikum Nirmati, Wara Data Lukum Islam Adina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fiqh Kabi al Kareem, this day I perfected for you your, relig uh, your religion, and I've completed my favor upon you, and I am pleased for you. With is uh, is with Islam as your your deen. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's deen doesn't require any anything additional. It doesn't require other texts in order to support Kitab wa Sunnah. Kitab wa Sunnah is already clear. And it's already, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already perfected the deen for us. So there's no need for additional fabricated things, uh, fabricated stories, uh, fabricated ahadith, because the Prophet sallallahu said, you know, the one who, man kathaba alayya muta'ammadan, you know, whoever uh, lies about me intentionally, then, take, then he will take his seat in the hellfire. So, Due to that hadith, it lets us know that it's impermissible to narrate fabricated a hadith, you know, and attribute that to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's very, very serious, a very serious sin, especially to do that intentionally. Okay, so and and you know the people of ah, the, uh, that are ahlan of that fin, you know, the people of. Uh, the people of knowledge who specialize in those fields of knowledge, like hadith, if they have deduced from studying those ahadith and the narrate the narrators and the chain of narration that those ahadith are fabricated or what have you or da'if, then we should not uh, use those as evidence for our practices in Islam, and we are not in need of them. And many of the other nasuls that illustrate this point, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al kareem attabi'u ma unzila ilaykum mir rabbikum wa la ta'tabi'u min dunihi awliya qaleelum ma tadhakkaroon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al kareem fi surah al-A'raf, He said, and uh, follow what has been revealed to you. From your Lord, and do not follow other than Him from the Oliya, you know, from uh, taking others as supporters or helpers. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qalilum ma tadakarun. Very few of them uh, reflect. And this shows us the importance, again of following that which was revealed from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the kitab Allah and the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and many of the other evidences and we've already mentioned them and so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil 
and everything, anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla, anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.